All right, guys, welcome to another podcast. I'm Andrew Houston from Prof for Contractors. And what we are doing is we got workshop secrets for contractors. And I mean, really, it's all about getting, giving you guys tips and tricks from the trenches real time. Today, we're going to be talking with Rick. This is part three um, of, you know, this would be the third podcast of a three-part series uh, on how to become a virtual contractor, how to virtualize your contracting business top to bottom. We're going to touch a little bit on how to virtualize on the material side of things, how to get that rocking and rolling. And, uh, and then we're going to wrap up talking about how to, how you can get your guys to be dispatched virtually, how you can get your office to be, you know, dispatched, uh, and, and ran. Not so much. Well, I guess you could say dispatched virtually. Um, so Rick, what are we all about at Profit Contractors? We are all about getting your profits to pay for your freedom. Yeah, exactly, guys. So let's face it, right? If you don't have profits in business, you don't have a business. And we're called Profit for Contractors because we're all about helping contractors get the systems, the tools, you know, to leverage their time, their team, to maximize their profits and their cash flow so that they can literally start getting their business to pay for that freedom, right? The freedom to go where they want to go, do what they want to do, and you know, have the money to bring in the right people. And um, that's it, baby. So let's do this. So Rick, um, tell us just a little bit quick uh, nutshell. Uh, you know, people might not have listened to the last two podcasts. Tell us just briefly, what do you do? Tell a little bit about your business, family business. Tell us about okay. that. We'll get right into it. Yeah, I'm Rick, Rick Harris of Harris Plumbing. It's a family business. My father started back in 1974 out of necessity. He owned his job for many years. Uh, my brothers and I came along and uh, kind of pushed the business in a, a good direction. Uh, we are licensed plumbers. I'm a licensed uh, plumber, gas fitter. Um, I've got the calluses, cuts on my hands to prove that I am a tradesman. So a tradesman who want, always wanted more than just to be busting my ass on a regular basis day to day. So we are family owned and operated. Still proud to be uh, plumbers. I love it, man. Love it. Okay. Like tradies helping tradies, man. Right. I own my own contracting company. I systemized it. I was able to scale it. So it was running without me. Um, and again, guys, the principles that we're going to be talking about today are not principles to be put into place in the next five, 10, 15 years. These are strategies that Rick's applying, um, that lots of our hundreds of our, of our champion CEO uh, clients are applying. Uh, we want to give you, you guys these insights. You can take them, apply them, use them, benefit from them. And, um, in so many different ways, not just for you, but for your team, for your customers, for your family. So, you know, when we talk about virtualizing, let's just, let's just look at the state of the union. What's the state of the union right now, Rick? What would you say with this little Corona? State of the union, a lot of fear, a lot of yep. confusion, a lot of uh, guesswork and man, it, it's the unknown and it's the fear of the unknown that that's, that's we're facing with right now mm -hmm. and what to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's, I think sometimes we either have the mindset of, you know, surviving this and thriving from it, you know, or we have the mindset of like digging a deeper hole and burying yeah. ourselves. You know, what's your mindset before we get into some of these strategies and techniques, uh, tactics, what's, what's been your mindset that has prevented you and your brother and your team from putting your heads in the sand? Um, We've got malice to feed. We have a responsibility and you can't just shut it down and go away. I mean, it's one thing if it's just you, but when you have people who have been with you for 10, 15, 20 years, you have an obligation to make sure that they, they're getting a paycheck and you can't run away from it. You have to get up, face it and, and put your head down and do it because the, what's the alternative for us? There is no alternative. You know, take you if you want to shut it all down, you might as well take the key to the front door of your office, snap it off, and then that's your exit strategy because Dude. you've got nothing else. I love it. Uh, you know, looking at this is not an option. I mean, look, guys, uh, before we get into this, you might be thinking, oh, maybe this stuff doesn't apply to me. You know, it does apply to you. Okay, there's no freaking question. I don't give a shit what kind of trade you are, how big you are, how small you are, where you are in the world. These things are going to help you guys. But the thing is, you got to have the right set of lenses. So, you know, if you're listening in on this, you know, and we're taking a pair of glasses, we're going to call these the glasses of opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. I want you guys to put on these glasses and, you know, let's look at things through how we can become better and stronger. And it doesn't mean that we're not dealing with challenges. It doesn't mean that some of you guys are, you know, haven't slowed down, if not, maybe, you know, come to a halt as far as your work. 
But that does not give us the right, in my personal opinion, as a champion CEO, to freaking slow down the opportunity of improving our business and making it better for us, our community, um, and everybody else around us. So, without further ado, what's that, Rick? Absolutely, it's true. I mean, how many times have I phoned you all excited about something that I stumbled upon? And we're in the middle of something that, something that should be a disaster. And I'm on the phone. And it's like, this is so exciting. I just, put, I just figured this out. So there is an opportunity and that's, that's it's amazing. Uh, focus on it. Look at it as an opportunity to learn. Yes. So true. Okay. So let's guys, we're going to cover off a lot in a short period of time. So let's fucking take off the gloves and rumble. So, yep. you know, uh, virtual contractor, right? Again, we covered off. Uh, again, we'll come back to it, but we covered off uh, in, in a nutshell um, how to dispatch virtually, right? That means getting your guys out there to work from home, to leave home, you know, to uh, to give them the opportunity to, and not forcefully, right, during this troublesome time, you got to give your people opportunity, give them opportunity of three choices. Hey, guys, you can, you can, you know, do service work, right? What were the three opportunities or three, op, you know, choices? Regular schedule calls, emergency calls only, or stay home. No judgment on it from anybody. Beautiful. Which you want. I love it. I love it. no judgment for anybody. So you know the team. You know it, you know you get a little bit of pushback. You get some people buy in. At the end of the day, we've got to look out for everybody. So allowing your guys to be dispatched from home. You know, uh, give me like the Coles notes uh, benefits of that, right? Coles notes benefits from that. The bullet points is it allows them to control more of their day when their day starts. It allows them to spend more time with their family. Love it. Lowers the stress on them, and it saves money. And it allows you to, if you're managing your your revenue based per hour, it will automatically increase the revenue per hour that those guys are generating. Right. And that's a that's a bonus to the company. But if you're looking to pay your if you're paying your team based on performance pay, and one of your KPIs is revenue per hour that they get bonused out on, boom. That's massive. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So, so all that, and at the same token, keeping them safer, right? And giving yeah. them a chance. Beautiful. It's safe. Safer, okay. much safer. Beautiful. Uh, if you want to find out how it, that equated to over a hundred thousand dollars in net, um, you know, potential in in increased net for uh, Rick, go back to podcast number one. Okay, podcast number two. What did we get into? Well, we covered off the field side. Now we had to get into the office side. So, you know, Rick was able to, you know, systemize, leverage the systems he's got, the communication, you know, you know, the, the, the positions that people are in in the office, you know, four or five people, six including Rick type of thing, um, to get the office staff also to work from home. Uh, tell us a little bit, I mean, some of these benefits you just talked about are, are identical, but is there anything else that you'd elaborate as far as benefits for the office staff? Benefits for the office staff, and again, this is something that we were forced into doing, and as a result of doing it, it made, made sense, made economic sense. We needed to make sure that there wasn't an interaction between somebody in the office, that you needed to maintain that social distancing. So after hours, we do have a call service <clears throat> and a call center, but what we did during the day is the people that were taking the calls and dispatching the calls, they're now doing it from home. And it, the cost savings alone, the, the comfort of somebody working from home, the stress that they don't have to worry about interacting with somebody that they don't know, it's massive. Massive, that's massive, massive. I love it. You're actually looking at, you know, it started to make you question, you know, the size of office that you need, if, you know. Sure. If, you know, and so I think that, you know, there's a big cost savings there as well, right? Yeah, massive, I'm massive. I mean, if you, if you have a space that you have to maintain for somebody to answer the phone, you may not have, have to do that anymore. And I go back to the pizza analogy. You order a pizza, there's not a pizza pizza call center. It's people working from home, taking calls and dispatching those pizzas from home. So if you can if you can do it that way, do it that way. People prefer working from home. They really do. Yeah, totally. And um, you know, it's it's the new it's the new evolution, right? When you think about it, we talked about this on on part, you know, um, podcast one, podcast two, that you know, the next generation are millennials, right? Yep. And, and we want to be able to, to be diversified. We want to be innovators. We want to be able to give the technology. We love technology. Um, some of the technology we talked about, guys, was Zoom, Z-O-O-M, caught you nothing, Trello boards. Um, man, I, I was showing there on that training we did internal to the champion CEOs, uh, Rick, you were on it, where 
Yeah. I, I was showing that app on my iPad called Notability. And yeah. I'm actually, I pulled in blueprints and drawings and, mm -hmm. and right. And we're, you know, I'm like, guys, like imagine sitting in front of your clients and you're able to go through a presentation and, you know, Again, we're going to be getting into, uh, we're going to have in-depth training on that in the next couple of days from uh, Jay Carter, which is, I mean, he's selling $98,000 deals virtually. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing stuff. So anyways, one of the other things that comes into play here is, um, and I'm going to kick myself. Guys, this is still new for me. I'm missing my headphones, so now i got to plug them in. Oh, there we go. Is that, can you hear me, Rick? Yeah, we're good. Uh, I think it was one of the other times I started the podcast. I had my headphones. I think the very first one, I had my headphones in. Yeah. And I was like, wait a second, I haven't even plugged it into the... Yeah, there you go. That's it. Perfect. So, um, so material, like how do you virtualize your material? Tell us a little bit about this from the perspective of um, virtualizing things or maybe even systemizing things from a supplier perspective as well as a location perspective. Well, it's interesting. I had to go out and pick something up from one of the wholesalers. And this was before things really started to kick in, kick in with the COVID-19 is I called the head. I said, put it on, put it up by the front door and I'll pick it up. And automatically that is a much better system because how many, how many guys use the excuse of going out and getting materials and they end that, and then add to that you know let's stop and get a coffee and then hang out and have a smoke before going to the store and going back so by doing that it, it's far more efficient as well and it goes back to making it more efficient making cutting down the amount of time that, that your guys have to work getting them home to their families and it, it's just a and it's introducing that was from a safety perspective but you look back further down the road and it's going to be an efficiency implementation that, that makes things far more efficient. Okay, Rick, I got to hold you right there. I got to hold you. Okay. You know, outside having a smoke, having a coffee. Okay. But let's yeah. face it. I was at the suppliers the other day. Okay. Yeah. We, we just purchased a, a little, no, sort of like a hobby farm. And yes. one of the things that, that I was getting material for um, was uh, this little outhouse that I'm having to build. Okay. And it, you know, think about how much time, Rick, just take a guess. I mean, simple outhouse, you know, some two by fours. I had to go get some screws, things of like that, some shingles, things of that nature. How long do you think, Rick, I was there? Uh, All together, probably about three or four hours. Yeah. So, so I, it wasn't three or four, but it was probably about an hour and a half that I was there. Now, if you account for all the travel time, going That's back and saying, forth, yeah. and then I forgot something, then I had to come. Yeah. You're right. It's a three or four hours. Okay, yeah. that's a bloody outhouse. Yeah. You guys, think about this. Um, you know, how much time do your guys spend waiting where Jimmy at the counter, okay, is like, yeah, let me go check to see if I got that valve. Let me go see uh -huh. if I got that roll of 14.2 or, you know, the, the 11, 11 C1 cover or whatever that is, guys. And we just throwing out some numbers there. But, you know, whatever it is. I mean, how much time, Rick, do you think your guys are saving? Uh, well, it's, it's a massive amount of time, too, and, and the thing that so many of us forget is where we're ordering materials from, don't they deliver? Won't they do curbside drop-off? Won't they do that kind of stuff? I'm sure that Jay's not out there picking up shingles and drink, bring them to a job site. No, no Jay no. Carter, no, ab absolutely not. So, so, you know, so the efficiency is, is, is there. Just take advantage of it. Absolutely. So that's on the that's on the supplier side. Now, guys, get them to stock it, right? Back to yes. back to inventory. Back to you know, Rick was talking about the office side of things. I mean, you know, imagine he's got his guys and they're being dispatched. Okay, and say there's a situation which is going to happen. All you contractors listening in, this applies to all you guys. You all order material. You all pay your guys, right? Like that's mm -hmm. right. you all have some sort of form of office functionality. Like guys, really. So here's the thing. When we're looking at you know, running a job site. Sometimes we gotta, you know, we gotta have material that we don't want it just sitting on the curb. We want maybe it remotely. Like, like Rick, how could we, you know, say we got, you know, longer running jobs. Some guys are doing projects. It's not just a service call. How could we, you know, leverage that with remote virtual spots? 
with remote virtual, you, you can you can fine tune your ordering process, you can fine tune your inventory process, you can fine tune all, all sorts of things to make it far more efficient so that you're not running back and forth for materials. You know what we forgot to do? We forgot to explain to them what does that what is Andrew freaking talking about? What would that look like, Rick? What would that look like? Is it someplace or storage unit? The storage unit, yeah. I mean, here's another here's another thing, and this this is not my idea. I actually heard somebody else talking about it that they have somebody who who works outside of their office or where their where their home base is. So what they do is they have a service manager. They have somebody assigned to it where they have an inventory system. And this is where you got to look at making sure that you're tagging all of the the materials that you're using, whether you're using purchase orders or tagging or whatever, so so you can track it. So as they go through materials that are used, the office gets notified of what's been used. Materials are gathered up. They're taken over and dropped off at the storage unit so that the, the guy or the person can come by and pick it up and continue on with their day. Far more efficient. Um, it takes it, it's a challenge to fine tune that process. But man, if you get it working properly, how much time are you going to save for you and for the people that are working with you? Yeah, and, and let me ask you this. Is it really that challenging if you look at it from this perspective? And let me just break this down for you guys. Don't try to systemize, same as I said on the previous call, don't try to systemize everything. Don't try to virtualize everything. Okay, so when it comes to ordering material, think about the most commonly used things that the guys need. All right, if you're an electrical contractor, you got guys working out, and they're wiring residential homes, okay, and get, I get, okay, I don't give a shit if it's residential, commercial, industrial, you know, you know is it gonna be more efficient for us to, to coordinate with the office instead of having the guys whose time should be billable, um, instead of running around looking for freaking material, have, uh, you know, you could have what I call as a runner, a simple person connected with the office, yeah. and stock the core material needed for that job, okay? It could be at a storage unit. You'd be like, Andrew, but that's going to cost me like a hundred bucks a month. Look at a hundred bucks a month. Once you've moved on from that project, you, you can, you can virtualize that wherever the storage places that, that that's needed. So now the guys are getting material, right? They know what's in there. They don't have to wait in line. It doesn't have to lie on the freaking job site. We're just going to get what Rick stolen. Yeah. Kind of mysteriously stolen, lost. lost. Yeah. Yep. Lost. Mm -hmm. Right. Totally. So, yeah. so, you know, is there any reason why people couldn't, you know, virtualize on the, on getting, you know, the client, uh, getting the suppliers to be leveraged more or virtualize different locations? I mean, honestly, what do you think would be the reason that they couldn't do it? Any reason? Um, it's, it's, it's a change. People don't like change. Dude, that's it. Right there. That's it. So look guys, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to start pulling this all together. This is going to be um, just sort of wrap up is, We've talked about the importance of, you know, this COVID-19, um, this terrible situation, uh, this challenge uh, turned into turning challenge into change, you know? And I think, you know, there's no reason why you can't start with one or two guys in the field. Maybe it's the service guy. I don't know. We're, we're, we're going to make it virtual, right? Um, Maybe it's, you know, the, the, the person that's in the office, one of the people in the office, you know, who would you say would be a good person to start in the office, Rick? Um, I would say the dispatcher. Beautiful. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Totally agree with you because the dispatcher goes hand in hand with the, with the guys. So they can yeah. you know, relate to, you know, the situation that the guys are dealing with from a virtual perspective. So yeah, dispatcher, um, you know, start with one, you know, uh, skilled tradesperson, you know, one tech, um, get success with that, you know, uh, straighten out the kinks. And then, you know, from a material perspective, you know, let's, let's start optimizing, you know, that from a, a virtual standpoint. Um, Rick, anything else you'd add to those three as far as, you know, benefit or any tips on it? It's, it's the efficiency. And I think, I think if you get more efficient as, as a general contractor, manager, whatever, the frustration always comes from the efficiency. And we're not very good communicators. So we need to start communicating better about what the efficiencies will do. And once you become more, far, far more efficient, you'll see the stress level on everybody. Just Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. It forces you to become better communicator as well. And I think here's yeah. my sort of like my wrap up. Guys, I always hear people talking about, um, you know, so tough to, to find good 
people, especially skilled tradespeople, or it's so tough to find good people. Mm -hmm. You imagine that the majority of people that are looking for work right now that are in the trades are people that are either at the tail end or the beginning of the millennial. Yeah. Right, Rick? You're dealing with yeah. a lot of those millennials, right? Sure. Yeah. Do Absolutely. millennials like technology, Rick? Love it. Yeah. Do millennials like flexibility? Oh, yeah. I mean, flex hours, they love the flex hours. Absolutely. Do, do millennials like the, the fact that you're looking out for them and their family in the sense of like, hey, man, leave from home uh, to go to a job and, you know, in the realm of a week, you're saving four to five hours that you can, you're able to spend with your, ta with your family. Do they like that? Yeah. yeah, it's a virtual hug. Do they like the fact that, you know, imagine in an ad right now, guys, you know, and this, you know, who knows what's going to, you know, time frame wise of this Corona, uh, you know, uh, 19, uh, where things are going to go in, in, in length. But think about how many skilled trades, A players are not working right now because they're not thinking, the owner's not thinking of change. No, no, there's so many, so many companies out there that just shut the doors. Interesting. And we're going to ride this out and right. you can't, you cannot ride it out. And exactly. the advantage, the advantage of having a company, whether it's two people, three people, one person, and it's set up where you have a really good culture and a positive, let's, let's figure this out attitude is you're going to start attracting those people that you want. You want to believe it, man. So, um, you know, and, and the other side of the fence here, so you've got attracting A players, you know, because you're able to keep things moving forward, right? Um, mm -hmm. You're able to, how, how does this help you attract A player uh, clients, Rick? Well, because the A, the A player client is going to see you as somebody that's highly efficient. They're going to see that you're different from your competition. And I've always said, if you want to compare yourself to the competition, you it really comes down to from an external perspective, it's just your phone number and your company name that's going to be different. Internally, you have to act differently, separate yourself from the competition, and you will attract those good clients because you'll have that good reputation. I love it. So, you know what? We go from survive to thrive. Okay. Yeah. And, and look. There's going to be a ton of contractors, and this is super sad. It breaks my heart because we have proper contractors. What, what are we all about again, Rick? We are all about getting your profits to pay for your freedom. Yeah, guys, and that, that really is about the, you know, the more profits that you can make, the more that you can afford to live the lifestyle you want, the more yeah. that you can afford to hire people to do the stuff that you don't want or shouldn't be doing. The more mm -hmm. you can systemize the business, get it to run without you. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know, there's going to be people that, you know, that are going to, that have a loser, you know, uh, give up mindset right now. And the, the inevitable, I hate to say it, is probably going to happen, which is they're going to go out of business. Then there's yeah. the ones that, yeah, they're going to streamline. Like, Rick, you know, reduce overhead costs by not needing that big of an office, if, if needing an office at all, right? You know, mm -hmm. saving you know, and increasing billable hours with our, with our guys and, and attracting and retaining A players, uh -huh. right? And maybe swapping out some of the B players that, that we might have for you know, A players, right, that are out there. Yeah. Um, you know, and attracting A player customers because we are building an A grade company. Yeah. I love it. Sure. Um, you know, any last words you would say, Rick, uh, to people that, are struggling and are hesitant to make some of these changes or any of the other changes that they might be listening on the, the podcast or. I, I, I get the, why people don't want to make the change. It's fear. And it's what, the, what they're used to, but particularly right now, everybody's sitting there thinking, okay, well, these are long-term solutions, but these just, you can do short-term solutions that can immediately impact your cash flow, the money that's in the bank and everything else by just making a couple quick tweaks, dispatching from home and, how, fa how fast, by the way, Rick, let me ask you, like, how fast, forget about, di you dispatch 10 guys. How fast yeah. could somebody dispatch one person from home? Oh, easy, easy, easy. Like, well, no, but when you say easy, you're talking like, you're talking about three, four weeks, or you're talking like tomorrow they could actually implement that. How long does it say, take to say work from home? Yeah, see, exactly. Dispatch from home. Exactly. Five seconds. Exactly, okay. Now, look, at, you might get some cringing, you might get some, you know, uh, resistance, always focusing on, you know, why you're doing it, 
always focusing on uh, when I say why, they can't just be the company. It's got to be about the safety of your team, about, yep. you know, about the clients, about what you're all about. Make sure you explain that to them, guys. Uh, secondly, pick an area that's the easiest to, to be outsourced or, or you know, virtualized. Don't, don't pick the most difficult thing, okay? Pick mm -hmm. the easy thing that you know you can win at. And winning creates what? More winning and creates more winners, yep. right? Um, Maybe. Baby steps. Baby steps, man. Baby steps. Use the technology. Don't give yourself this bullshit. You, don't, I, there's no bullshit that, you, that you, anybody can tell me that they can't afford it. This thing costs, this is free. Mm -hmm. Zoom's free. Trello's free. You know, uh, there's so many apps out there that you guys can use and, um, and make it happen. Okay. You guys can get through this and not just surviving. You can get through this becoming stronger so that you can thrive. Uh, and those that get through this, the, 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 the window of opportunity, I mean, how big would you say it is, Rick? Window of opportunity to learn is it's, it's pretty. No, I mean like, like when this thing, when, they, when we come out of this, how much when opportunity is there going to be? Oh, massive, massive, because you made all these changes. You made all these changes, so you're going to hit the ground running where the other guys have got, still got to get the machine and they got to start it up, they warm it up and get it out there. Yeah. Guys, I've got to say one last thing on this. When people get a paradigm shift, and a paradigm shift, I got this from Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. A paradigm shift is when the brain gets to see something different. It never sees the same thing the same way it used to see it. It's, it's just who we are as humans. That's why we've evolved. But when you evolve your team to see things differently, to see things better. When you evolve your customers, guys, during these difficult times to see things differently, mark my freaking words. When we come out of this and their old supplier, their old, you know, whatever company, trades company that was, that, that was doing the work for them, comes to them and goes, hey, man, yeah, let's go back to the old way. What uh -huh. do you think those people are going to say, Rick? Yeah, told you so. Yeah, exactly, right? They're going to want what they were given that's better than what they had. Yeah. Okay, guys? So, listen, stay strong. You guys can do this. And, Rick, um, just want to say thank you so much for these last three podcasts. We've got a lot, lot more of them coming with you and a lot of yeah. other experts. Guys, we are so passionate about helping you guys because we love you. We are in the trenches. Rick, you know, Rick's still running his contracting company. You know, we know what it's like. It's not the easiest. We've got a lot of people that don't support us. Governments aren't helping us. Nobody's giving us any favor. So guess what? We got to fucking step it up. And that's what we're here for is to help you guys step it up and step it up with strategies that are fucking things that you can put in play right after this call. Okay. Yeah. So make it happen. If you guys want more insights, more, you know, uh, tools, templates, uh, whether it's the Monday morning meeting templates or, or whether it's filter fast templates, all those kind of stuff that I might have mentioned in the last few podcasts, go to www.profitforcontractors.com and let's get your profits to pay for your freedom. And um, look, guys, you know, there's lots of free training, lots more in depth things that we're going to be covering off. Look forward to seeing you on this podcast, share it with others, and we'll see you on the flip. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, pal. See you, brother. Ciao. Yeah.